Welcome back to Disking Around and our first trash round. Trash round is a term that I coined several months ago for something that I do every few weeks, which is go out, play around a disc golf at one of my local courses that's right near the water, and I bring this kit with me to go retrieve discs out of the water, uh, out of the trees, off of roofs, wherever they are, and get them back into your bag. Uh, I text the numbers back and whatnot, and we'll get into that in just a second. And then I also clean up trash off the course. Uh, a lot of people bring dogs out there. There's dog poop everywhere. There's trash everywhere, even though there is a trash can on each hole, if not two. Tons of trash cans out there, but for some reason, people seem to feel like it's okay to litter. I like to have a nice clean course to come back to, so I get a little crazy about it, and I clean up the trash on the course. Somebody's gotta do it, so I kinda help the park maintenance and pitch in with that as kind of my entry fee into the course. It's a beautiful city-owned course right near the water. Gorgeous views. I just love being over there. It's where I played my first round of disc golf and absolutely just still love it over there, even, even though the trees don't treat me well sometimes. So anyway, this is my disc retrieval kit. Uh, why, did it, why do I have all of this? This is a little crazy, Mr. Disking Around, isn't it? <laughs> kind of is. If you think I'm crazy, put it down in the comments. Uh, I kind of started getting all of this because I lost a disc into the water during one of my first tournaments a few months ago. Uh, it was a charity tournament and uh, I had just gotten uh, into the PDGA, I joined the PDGA and they gave me this Axiom Crave, which I had really been enjoying for a few weeks and I threw it right into the water, wouldn't you know? So none of the people there with retrieval, retrieval tools could get it and um, I couldn't find it and I vowed right then and there, I'm gonna get this disc no matter what it takes and I guess this is what it takes. So uh, at least that's what it took me. Uh, let me know what you use as far as retrieval tools down in the comments and whatnot. So I just have this as my ultimate retrieval tool kit. Um, what do I do with discs um, that I find? And I know that's going to be a question uh, down in the comments, kind of a controversial thing for some reason. Um, a lot of different views on what you should do with discs. I'm not saying what you're doing is wrong if it's different from what I'm doing. This is just what I'm doing. Um, but if I find a disc in the water and 80, 80 90% of discs are found in the water by me um, and there's ink on the back that I can read. I text or call the owner and let them know that I found their disc with a you know picture of their disc or whatever and offer them uh, a way to get it back. So if they're local, I offer to meet them at a local place in public at my convenience uh, coming up soon or a uh, local lost and found located in a fantastic small business that sells discs. Uh, if I return it there, I let them know that, hey, I've just dropped it off at the lost and found. They'll keep it in there for 30 days for the owner to pick up. If somebody doesn't pick it up within 30 days, it goes in the for sale side um, and they sell them for five bucks. So great place to pick up discs that are already kind of beat in or you know, discover new molds or just, you know, build a bag for pretty cheap. I like that option. Uh, or I can ship it to them. Uh, if I do not find ink on the bottom of a disc, which is, you know, very few of them, I keep it. So, if, you know, tell me what you would do down in the comments below. Without further ado, it's getting really nice outside. It's going to be about 55 degrees today, pretty sunny. Um, and I'm going to take you guys along with me to use all of this stuff. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, I use uh, the Dy Dynamic Discs 18-foot retrieval tool. This is one of the things that I use the most, uh, especially when I'm in the water. I use this as kind of a walking stick uh, and stick it kind of down into the mud, into the you know silt and stuff like that. We've got pretty sandy soil here and uh, use it as a walking stick to keep myself steady and then get stuff 
out of the water, pick it up and stuff. So I don't have to put my whole arm into the cold water. It's still early spring right now. So this helps me out a lot. I have since wrapped it with paracord right here, helps the grip just a little bit. The rubber grip that this came with um, works pretty well. And we'll review this product and the dyna dynamic disc golden retriever, which is coming up in just a second. Uh, I've put this loop onto it because I have butter fingers. I will drop this, so I just connect this loop to my belt, my belt loop or whatever on my pants or on the waders, and it's not going anywhere. So that, that's pretty nice. Uh, I do have a bunch of different heads for that retrieval tool that I just showed you. Uh, I've got uh, two different hook style heads that want to stick to each other right now, so we'll just get them all out of the bag. I've got two different double hook style uh, retrieval tools right here, or retrieval heads right here. This blue one came with the dynamic discs, uh, telescoping retrieval. These guys came uh, with a backup kit that I, I bought. This, this guy came with it too. This one's for dragging discs out of the water. Uh, these guys are more meant to, and you can use them in the water, poke them out of trees, get them off a roof, something like that, yeah, out, out of some brush that you can't reach. Pretty good uh, retrieval tool. Um, and then I've got the previously mentioned Dynamic Disc Golden Retriever. Uh, the Golden Retriever is for water retrieval. You throw it in the water, it kind of expands, and I'll show you in, out in the field in a few minutes. Um, and uh, you kind of pull it back in. So this came with 50 feet of a little bit cheaper, a little bit thinner paracord. I have since replaced it with thicker paracord, 75 feet of it, so a little bit diff a little bit more distance, and then put a carabiner on it. Again, Butterfingers, I will throw this right into the water and lose it if it's not attached to me. So it's attached to me when I'm using it. Uh, now to different accessories that I have. Uh, I have a knife if I want to cut the paracord or whatever gets stuck on something. I've got a lighter for frayed edges or whatever out there that I want to use it for. I've got some dog poop bags right above that. I do bring my dog with me, uh, but there's also a lot of other uh, dog owners out there that don't pick up after their dogs, and I'm glad to do it. Not just kidding, I'm not glad to do it, but to get it off the course so you're not stepping on it during your rounds or mine. Uh, some extra socks to keep mom proud. Want to keep my uh, my feet wet or my wet feet dry after I'm out uh, and change back into them after I'm waiting. Uh, I've got a uh, battery backup right here for my phone, which I will be using today when, uh, when I'm filming. I've got a few Ziploc bags here. Keep my phone in, keep my wallet in, uh, my keys and stuff like that. Uh, grocery bag, keeping discs in that I find that are wet and stuff like that. I don't want to put that stuff in my, my uh, dry bag and stuff. And then I've got some microfiber towels, bunch of microfiber towels to dry myself off with. I do keep like a bath towel in my car to dry myself off with just in case I get a bunch of river water into my waders. Uh, that's only happened once, but it's nice to have. Uh, these are for drying off discs, my equipment, myself, whatever. And then I do have a few trash bags up here for picking up trash on the course. Um, and they're, they're good for other things if I have wet clothes and you know just wanna throw them in there. Uh, now getting into the wading kit, I do have some rubber gloves that I keep. Uh, if I'm picking up something gross, uh, something really sharp, uh, some glass or something that I find, whatever. Uh, maybe I'll put these on. Uh, I do have inside of this kind of travel bag for clothing. I do keep uh, some old winter boots that I've converted into wading boots. Uh, these have an okay amount of traction in the water. Um, and then I've ripped all the foam out of these so they dry a lot easier. Uh, just keep them in here so after I'm out in the water, I can put them back in here, then I'll get my car all gross, and then I can come home and dry them off. I do have uh, waders in here. And these are, uh, they don't have boots on them, so that's why I have that. They have got like a thick sock type of thing on here. The, the Hodgman, I think H2 or H3 waders, something like that. I keep them in this waterproof bag, uh, so when I come home, I wash them off and uh, hang them up. 
Uh, these are kind of the chest style waders that you would see fishermen use in the water. They have a little bib on the front and the back that I can actually keep discs in, which is pretty cool. Uh, while I'm uh, retrieving them, it has a little bit of insulation. Like I said, right now it's in the mid 50s, so the river that I live near is still very cold. It's a very large river. Um, and then I keep it, you know, all of that, all of this stuff in uh, my Adidas waterproof bag right there. It's a little roll top bag that I got from Adidas during the pandemic um, when they had everything for super cheap. So this is everything that I'm about to use in the field. You're about to, you're about to see me use. Again, we're going to review a couple of these things. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get out in the field, play a trash round. I'm not going to show you the round of disc golf that I'm about to play. I'm going to play with some buddies here on the channel in a few weeks and uh, kind of get into a couple disc reviews and stuff like that. But for now, uh, I'm going to go out, play around, and then afterwards set up the camera, show you all of this stuff in, in use, and see what we get. Let's see how many discs we get, and maybe I'll take you along with the journey of returning them and uh, stuff like that. So depending on all, how all of this works out. So yeah, let's get out into the field. All right, it's a, a beautiful 55 degrees here on the course, a little bit windy. You see the trees blowing around in the breeze right there. We're gonna go check out the shoreline and uh, use the Dynamic Discs 18 foot retriever and the golden retriever, see what we can do first, and then we're gonna go waiting. So let's go check out the shore. I'll be back if I find anything. Well, 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 look what we have here. All right, it's a little windy out here, but we've come across our first disc. We've got the Dynamic Discs 18-foot retriever out here. This one is right next to shore. Actually, I'm surprised somebody didn't come get a stick and grab it. Uh, but we've got the uh, water disc retrieval head on this kind of doing this uh, with the phone in my hand so we'll see how this goes uh, I know it's a little windy out here hopefully you can hear me so we're gonna get this in the water and kind of fish it out real quick even one-handed this is probably gonna be pretty quick uh, to get to shore and we'll see what this is I'm not seeing any ink on it so far so we'll see what it is and like a paper plate or something kind of does look like one of those little dixie plates in the water especially with how it's like floating around we're getting a good amount of wind and uh, water action right here so yeah i'll get back to it when i get this out of the water it ended up being a halo shrike not a bad disc it doesn't have any ink on it it's uh 173 through 175 grams so Good score, good score. Let's uh, get back to it, see what else we can find. All right, we're on to our second one here. This one's a little bit further from shore. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's kind of the pink thing right here, kind of the top of the frame. Uh, it's probably about 15 feet out. I'm gonna go ahead and use this Dynamic Discs uh, retriever right here and see if I can get it. Uh, you'll kind of see the whole process here. I'm not one-handed on this one. So I'm just fully extending this guy all the way out. And it seems like it's just at the reach. So I'm just gonna step out a little bit, try to scoop it up, try to get a little past it. Oh, it's a little bit windy here today. It's a little bit harder to see in the water. So I can't see that far out from shore. It's not super sunny either, so yeah so but we're making some progress on it right here we'll see what this disc is see if it's inked it almost looks like a dynamic disc kind of bursty kind of plastic but we'll see oh it is awesome whoops <laughs> that happens sometimes just get it right back in the water kind of look like a judge a little bit and it does have a phone number on the back so I'm gonna go ahead and give that one a text pretty sweet that's number two for today just from the shore
All right, it's super windy right now, but uh, this is the hole that I was at when I lost that disc. Yeah, you can kind of see my frustration right next to all of that water. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna bust out the waders today. There's a little bit of ice on the water and it's super windy right now, making it really hard to see in the water. So we're just gonna search for stuff from the shore with the two retrievers we've been using. And uh, we're about halfway through right now, so uh, let's keep at it. All right, we're just finishing up with our trash round here. Ended up shooting six over on uh, my actual round, which is pretty good. My, uh, my course record here is a five, so not bad for such a windy day. Pretty happy with that. Um, as far as our trash round went, I ended up finding two thirds of a bag of trash, which is in that trash can right there. Um, and I found two discs in the water. Uh, did not end up busting out the waders. It's a little bit dark out, a little bit windy. That's making it hard to see in the water uh, and it's a little bit icy. So we'll get to that next time. I thought it was going to be uh, pretty ideal for that this time, but it was not. Um, we did end up picking up uh, Dynamic Disc Truth, uh, which we will clean up. And uh, this one's inked. We will return it to the owner. We'll text them this evening. And we also found an uninked Halo Shrike from Innova. Nice disc. Looks like it's in super good condition. Got to clean this guy up. And uh, we'll add it to the collection, see if I can eventually throw it one day and get the arm speed for it. I'm still a beginner. That's a 13 speed disc. So yeah, thank you for coming along with me for disking around. Again, uh, you know, subscribe if you really like the content today. Uh, this next week when I come out, I am going to review the Dynamic Discs uh, 18 foot retriever and the Golden Retriever as well and have individual videos, reviews on those two coming up right afterwards. And we'll shoot a small trash round where I get into the water and show you my waiting setup. So super cool, uh, keep coming along with the journey. I'm really excited for this spring and the summer as this park and uh, a lot of other courses around here start to heat up and uh, get nice for a couple rounds. So yeah, hopefully your games are going well. Hopefully you're finding all your discs. And if not, hey, maybe I'll find yours in the water and give you a text to get it right back in your bag. So thank you for watching Disking Around and we'll see you on the next one.